Good morning to you. The 122nd Psalm opens with the words, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. That psalm is one that's known as a song of ascents one that worshipers would sing on their way to Jerusalem. And since Jerusalem is a city on a hill, the last part of the journey was always uphill. And joyful songs like these, sung together by the worshipers on their way, helped to ease the climb and prepared the hearts of the worshipers for their reason that they were going in the first place. Mm -hmm. There are several songs in our songbook that have a similar emotional effect and are often used as opening songs. My thoughts in preparing this lesson have revolved around one of those, the song Sweet Hour of Prayer. You'll find it in our book at song number 827. It was written about 175 years ago, and it uses poetic language that the phrasing isn't exactly conversational to our modern ears, um, but the mood comes through pretty plainly, plainly. The writer unquestionably valued time spent in prayer. Whether in solitude, verse 1 is kind of solitude, verse 2 is definitely gathered with other Christians. Let's, let's take a little look at that text. Um, every verse in the song starts and ends the same way. Not only with the same phrase, but also repeating that phrase in the beginning, the ep the repetition emphasizes the point. I had a, a college teacher once who said that everything I tell you is important. If I say it twice, it's on the test. <laughs> if I say it three times, it's on the final. Okay. So in this song, we've got three or four verses each starting and ending with the, with the phrase, sweet hour of prayer. It leaves little doubt that this is the focus of the song. Amen. The hour talked about in hour of prayer is, is more likely referring to an established set time, one that you'd look forward to, not an hour in, in duration, although one who valued prayer, like the writer of this song did, uh, I, I have no doubt that it encompassed a significant amount of time as well. Either way, it, what made, in either way, what, what was it that made this hour of prayer sweet? Each verse in the song brings a different perspective to that question. In verse 1, it brings the benefit of calling us away from the cares and concerns of this physical world into the throne room of the God of the universe, who's actually paying attention to us. Amen. It provides relief from the distress and the grief that drag us down and provides an effective and ready escape route from temptations. I have to agree, that sounds pretty sweet. Yes, sir. Sweet to me. Verse 2, that, it's the one that made me think of, of the Song of Ascents. It's, it's talking about the communion that exists between, uh, between like-minded people eagerly 
desiring to come together and share time in prayer, hurrying to get there, sharing in the joy and eager anticipation. That sounds pretty sweet, too. Verse 3 expresses gratitude for prayer itself and kind of amazement that it that God set this up and it works <laughs> that that we can that prayer itself carries our requests you know we we think of personification as taking something that's inanimate and giving it human like qualities well this is sort of birdification i guess prayer has wings that carry our 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 petitions like a like a carrier pigeon uh, up to god uh, and he god is is fully engaged desiring to bless us yes, sir. he wants and seeks for us to seek him to believe him to trust him that really is the very nature of who God is yes, and the thrust of his revealed word to us. Whatever our cares, we can safely entrust them to God. Amen. That sounds pretty sweet, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, sweet. The fourth verse, it's not in our book, um, but the, the verse as it was written reads, Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, may I thy consolation share, till from Mount Pisgah's lofty height I view my home and take my flight. This robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air, farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. It alludes to the end of the book of Deuteronomy when the Israelites were preparing to enter the promised land. And Moses was not permitted to cross over, but only to view this land from the top of Mount Nebo, the the highest in a cluster of hills known as Pisgah. The word itself, Pisgah, means summit. So it's up on a peak. From there, he views the land. And as he knows, he's, he's dying there. Uh, he recognizes that prayer itself, the author recognizes that prayer is a blessing all the way to the end of our lives, after which we'll be able to see God face to face. He'll be as present as the light around you on a sunny day. We'll see God face to face. And as sweet as a sweet hour of prayer may be, that that's going to be even sweeter. Amen. It's my hope that, that taking a closer look at this song has helped you to see this portrayal of prayer. Portrayal of prayer. Sorry. It, it's something of great value. Yes, sir. Something to be cherished and appreciated. Let's sing it together now. You'll find it at 877 in the book. And I think, yeah, here we go. I'm going to try and keep the tempo moving, and if you cooperate with me, that'll be easier. Okay. <laughs> Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my father's throne. May all my 
wants and wishes none in seasons of distress and grief my soul shall often found relief and oft escaped the tender snare by thy return sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer the joy i feel the bliss I share of those whose anxious spirits burn with strong desires for thy return. With such I hasten to the place where God my Savior shows his face and gladly take my station there and wait for me sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer thy wings shall my petition bear to him whose true Faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless, and since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace, I'll cast on him my hand. Oh.